Good evening, everyone. I'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. Before we start the agenda tonight, if you care to join us in a, in a prayer before we start. Dear Lord, as we head into this holiday season, help us to remember that we are celebrating your gift to us. Be with our students as they gear up for final exams and end of the semester activities. Help us all to rest and relax and enjoy some well-deserved time off with fans, with friends and family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. First item on the agenda tonight is recognition. Good, ever good evening, everyone. <laughs> That caught some of you off guard, didn't it? It's great to see all of you this evening. Happy holidays. We're going to start with our guiding principle of individual student growth. Central nine students of the month for the month of November. So each month, C9 asks their instructors to identify students who have shown the character and work work ethic to be named student of the month in each program. So for the month of November, we have four high school students that we would like to recognize. Congratulations to all of you. Ryan Mullins in construction trades. Ryan, go ahead and come forward. Kylie Favrito. Oh, Ray, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me, Ray. Kylie Favrito in culinary arts too. Caleb Reed in Welding Technology, and Kira Crabtree in Work-Based Learning. Congratulations to all four of you, or two of you. You have to also introduce your parents or someone who brought you. And then talk a little bit about your program, what you do at C9, and what you hope to do in the future. Uh, so my mom came. And uh, I'm in the welding program, so basically we learn like, like all the different processes and how to apply them. Right now, I'm doing an internship at Wessels Tank, and we build uh, pressurized tanks mainly for oil rigs, but a lot of other things. Like they did all the tanks that go into Lucas Oil Stadium and all that. So I'm getting to see like a very wide variety of welding and applications. So you're getting to see all kinds of different things like pressure testing and basically just a lot of ways to uh, use welding. What is the, what's the uh, you guys talked about like opening salary or median salary for your industry? Uh, the opening to like median salary is around fifty to sixty thousand, with a high end of around ninety thousand. And that's coming out of, of high school with that certification. So outstanding! Well, congratulations. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ray. I'm in construction trade. My mom Paula back there. Basically, my class. We're building a house right now. Basically, like you learn all the ins and outs of building, like running electricity through it, the flooring, carpeting, painting, like the railing and everything. What's the favorite job in construction trade so far? I don't know, I've had pretty fun laying flooring and stuff. It's just kind of fun seeing how it goes all together and just completing the house. What does the future look like for you? I'm not quite sure. I'm just getting into this. All right. <laughs> and that was paparazzi time. Congratulations. And now we would like to recognize our academic all state students. So, as I call your name, please go ahead and come forward. Nathan Tyler, Hillary Hensley, Abby Nagel, Megan Tunnel, Sydney Clements, Lily Lacey. Maddie Arcan, Michaela Codwell, Kira Cochran, Emma Genter, Madeline Reynolds, Dylan Clark. Jack Henderson, 
Robbie Knight, Giovanni Lopez Perez, and Owen Mahan. Congratulations to all of you. Excellent. Well, as you can see, we have several outstanding scholar athletes. Come on down here. Um, and we're going to have you do the same thing. Uh, introduce anyone that's with you and talk about your future plans. Um, all right. I'm here with my mom and dad, um, Angela and Dennis Tyler, and um, I'm going into poli sci. Um, just got accepted into uh, Indiana University um, the other day. Um, so uh, going there, uh, getting through the program and seeing what the future holds for me after that. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Hillary Hensley. My parents are Mark and Mary Beth Hensley, and I plan on attending Franklin College to go pre-med and play volleyball there. I'm, oh. <laughs> I'm Abby Nagel. My mom is over there, Michelle Peake, and then my sister. I'm planning on going to IU Bloomington into the Kelly School of Business to study accounting. Hi, I'm Megan Tennell. I'm here with my parents, Julie and Chris. Um, I plan on going to IU Bloomington to study neuroscience on the pre-medical track. Uh, I'm Lillian Lacey, and my dad and sister are with me. And I plan on going to college, maybe running, and probably I'll probably study something that'll lead me onto the medical path. I'm Maddie Arcand. My parents and grandparents are here. I plan on attending IEPY for nursing. I'm Sydney Clements. I'm here with my parents, Ray and Sherry. My plan is after another year of high school to um, hopefully go into running in college and then a biology or biochem major to go either pediatric surgery or veterinary medicine. I'm Michaela Cadwell. I'm here with my parents, Josh and Becky Cadwell, and I still have another year of high school, so we're still looking at that for college-wise, but I want to go into pharmaceutical. Um, my name is Kira Cochran. I'm here with my dad, and I plan on attending Purdue University to study elementary education. I'm Emma Genter. I'm here with my mom. I plan to go to either Michigan State or Purdue and do their Army ROTC scholarship, or sorry, Army ROTC program there. Uh, my name is Jack Henderson, and I'm with my mom, dad, sister, and my grandma, and I have no clue what I want to do. <laughs> uh, my name is Pablo Ioani, and I'm with my mom, and I'm going to Ivy Tech, but I don't know what to do yet. Uh, my name is Owen Mahan. My parents are Christian and Alicia Mahan. Um, neither of them are here, so Michelle is my mom for tonight. Um, and I plan on attending pre university to study engineering or industrial management. What's up, you guys? Uh, two rows, and we'll get uh, pictures. And come on, right here, you're gonna come down. Owen Mahan, man. I'm All right. <laughs> A couple things. Uh, the soccer, if you're a soccer player, raise your hand for the guy's team. So the guy's soccer team for the third year in a row actually had the highest GPA, and they uh, look at schools across Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, and Illinois, and our guys always rank high. And so congratulations to this group of guys as they continue the excellence. Also, how many people want to go into education here? One, there's one at least. So we were actually starting a program, and it was a thank you to the referendum being passed. We we're starting to track all of the seniors as they travel on through the next four years because we would love to see the superstars come back here and teach in our school district. So we're going to keep track of people like that. And this year, for the first time in October, we actually opened up six positions in uh, Mrs. Worland is, is spearheading this program. We have four elementary, 
a special ed, and a math science. And not that we have those openings, but we're anticipating openings. And if we don't, it'll just lower class size. And that is all because the community said yes to the referendum. So I want to thank the community again and what we're trying to do to keep the young superstars in our community. We're going to... <laughs> hey, congratulations, everyone. Great job. <laughs> Mr. Lamb, that will conclude recognition. And, and for all the parents, you are more than welcome to stick around. But if not, this would be a good time to, to head out. Thank you. I hope everyone has a great Christmas as well. Bye. Yeah, thank you. What? Academic all state. What are, what are the criteria? What's the criteria for that? I'm just curious. Yep. Academic all state. So they have to have, uh, depending on their these respective sports, but above a three five. And then the coach recognizes them and then into that. Some some school uh, some programs have a higher uh, limit, that, and they may go to three seven five. Uh, but you don't. It does not matter how often you played actually in the game as long as you're on the team. That's how you get to be academic all state. Thank you, Mr. Lamb. All right. We'll open up for uh, public board comments. We'll limit to uh, two minutes for any comments pertaining to today's agenda. Anyone has anything, you're welcome to come up to the microphone. Okay, seeing none, we'll go through the uh, board councils tonight. Athletic council, there's no update for the month. Collective bargaining, there's no update for the month. Communications. No update. Legislative. No update. Mental health. We had to postpone that meeting, and the meeting is December the 16th will be our next meeting. We will have something to report uh, in January. Thank you. Music council. We didn't meet. RDC. Uh, nothing that pertains to schools. Superintendent strategic plan. Yes, we are continuing to meet, um, looking at... Uh, the strategic plan. Um, last time we talked about grad pathways on January the 29th. We're going to be looking at grades five, six, seven, and eight. What should that look like uh, over the next 10 years for our school district? So I'd invite all of the community out for that. Uh, we look forward to having and having that conversation. And right now we're st we are still on that. In March, uh, the board will get a draft of the strategic plan, and in April, uh, move to adopt for the 20. 21 school year and beyond. And then the superintendent's strategic task force. Nothing to report. Thank you. Move on to the consent agenda. I will move for approval. I have a motion. Do we have any questions or comments? Uh, Mr. Lamb, I have one comment. Uh, on the addendum on the personnel report, you'll notice that we had a, a situation where we had an employee that um, is no longer with us. And I am recommending that, that we move forward with the benefit structure as uh, the, we pay the employer portion, they pay the employee. There was an issue with regarding um, that over a leave period. And so I recommend the board allow us just to move forward and not go back and try to collect anything uh, due to an error. Okay. Any questions on that? Comments? Okay. All those in favor, uh, respond with the sign of aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. <coughs> okay, we'll move down to the superintendent reports. Dr. Clendell. All right, we have uh, Hawaiian exploration and green cleaning. Come on up. I know these two ladies have put forth a lot of energy that they, they applied one time. Didn't get it three times. Well, I, knew that. I knew they applied at least one time. And they kept battling. And so I wanted to say thank you for your diligence uh, and continuing to, to 
apply for the grant. So Cindy and Nina is going to share a little bit about what you learned in talking to the, the people in Hawaii. First off, we wanted to thank Franklin Community Schools. Can you hold the mic? Yeah. <laughs> First off. Hello? Hello? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> First off, we'd like to thank Franklin Community Schools for allowing us the opportunity to visit Maui, Hawaii. <laughs> How many places that people work can say they sent them to Hawaii? <laughs> With our grant, we were given the opportunity to visit King Kamehameha the Third Elementary School, go to a luau, learn a little bit about Hawaiian history, and see some beautiful sights along the way. First off, we went to King Kamehameha III Elementary School and met Francine Flores, the State of Hawaii's 2018 Department of Education Employee of the Year. We loved having the opportunity to visit Mrs. Flores and to visit the school she works at. She has been working there for 32 years, <laughs> and she attended there when she was in grade school. So that's an interesting little fact. Hawaii uses green cleaning for their schools. Oh, let me get that picture in there. And um, their schools have, they don't have a lot of carpet in them <laughs> because of the humidity. So they have a lot of um, tile floors and their main thing with the green cleaning that they do different than we do. Francine said they use a lot of bleach. <laughs> so that was the biggest difference we noticed there. Ms. Flores inspired us and in as busy as they were that day trying to get ready for school to open the next week and plus they were doing interviews for custodians which Nina and I thought about <laughs> she, took the time. she took the time to show us around and um, was very laid back <laughs> We were told she always deals with whatever is thrown at her, sometimes anticipating problems beforehand, and still has a positive attitude. Her and their principal, Steve Franz, who we are pictured with, both showed us aloha spirit, which we truly hope we brought back to Creekside with us in Franklin Community Schools. Um, another objective of our grant was to bring back some of the Hawaiian culture to our Creekside students. And we look forward to doing this in a couple of different ways. First, we are working with our Cub Care staff to have a day in January with our Cub Care students and share our luau experience with them. We are planning a fun afternoon of Hawaiian activities, share some Hawaiian treats, and show and tell through our pictures and videos about Old Lahaina Luau while we, we enjoy while there. And secondly, Miss Sarah Records, who has traveled all over the world, but she's never been to Hawaii. Her class is studying Hawaii in January also, and she's allowing us the opportunity to share our Hawaiian adventures with her students. Mm -hmm. And we will be sharing about our road trip to Hana, which was a 54 mile drive along the amazing and rugged Maui coastline, which included um, one lane bridges, hairpin turns, and incredible island views. On this one day trip to Hannah, there was 620 curves, 59 bridges along the way. We experienced a rainforest, saw eucalyptus trees, beautiful waterfalls, a black sand beach, and a red <coughs> sand beach. So we look forward to sharing that along with our other experiences from Maui, one of which um, included the United States largest banyan tree. It was planted in Lahaina in 1873 and has grown to over 60 feet tall, has 16 major trunks, and its canopy spans over a quarter, mile, quarter of a mile. It was quite amazing to see. We also thought the students will enjoy seeing our pictures of the school we visited and what an elementary school in Hawaii is like compared to ours at Creekside. One of the great things about working for Franklin Community Schools 
is that everyone is valued and allowed the same opportunities. And we thank you, Franklin Community Schools, for our 10X grant, the amazing trip to Maui, and such an incredible opportunity to share and form positive relationships with our students at Creekside. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We're glad you came back. <laughs> <laughs> So Miss Amanda is passing out a cannoli to thank you for the opportunity to visit Italy. I had a cannoli every single day for 10 days, along with pasta. I didn't miss a day with pasta or a cannoli. So enjoy a cannoli that's a little Americanized, and I did not make them. So um, it was an opportunity of a lifetime. I knew about Reggio Emilia, Italy, um, from this time I started college at Ball State in 1996. And I kind of backtracked and found out why it was such a movement in some of my early childhood classes is because in 1990, it hit the front of Time magazine. So it got some traction over in the States and learned about that journey when I was at the center um, this summer. So um, when I was at Ball State for my undergrad, I had some different courses about the Reggio Emilia approach. And then when I went back to get my master's, I had a couple of courses on the Reggio Emilia approach. So it was like a dream come true to actually go to Reggio Emilia, Italy, where this was all um, developed. So um, my adventures were all over northern Italy. I was able to visit four different cities and stay in four different cities. And um, I started in Venice which you need to get there within 20 years. It'll be underwater. Mm -hmm. It was a wonderful experience. Um, cut through the top of, um, so Venice is right here. Um, went down to Siena. is about the farthest south what we, we went. And then Reggio Emilia is where the pin is and ended in Florence. So we flew into Venice and out of Florence. It was the best 10 days. Um, can't get any better when you're eating pasta every day, almost for every meal. Mm -hmm. And um, just enjoying just the, the culture around you um, and appreciating what you have and what um, things that we wish we should, could do better here. Um, so the Reggio Emilia approach is just to value um, strong, resilient children um, and providing them the culture and the environment to learn and thrive in. Um, we do a good job in the States with that and different centers have different approaches and different curriculum, but it's really letting the children guide some of your day. Um, if they want to know about the Super Bowl you're going to shift your next day and provide them some experiences and some hands-on opportunities about the Super Bowl. Um, if it's about whatever they, you're, you're supposed to field in um, things that they are um, wondering about and what they, what they question. But the power of Reggie Amelia is about the questioning to kids and how they learn from each other and the adults providing the opportunity. So, um, this is Reggio Emilia, the center. It was an old Parmesan factory that the city gave to them. And it's grown. It's, a, it's almost an entire city block now where the students learn. Then they have a, um, a, a library and a center that we I was at for half of a day just researching and learning. Um, and then there's um, the whole area where this is one of our bilingual tour guides one day. Um, and they take you in and out of the center area where they have all the displays. So as you can see, I'm smiling from ear to ear. I was like a kid in a candy store. It was awesome. I spent all day Thursday and Friday and I had to pick those days because it was the only day they let, they had a, um, a translator in July. So I actually rearranged my whole trip because they didn't have translators all the time and I wanted to get the full, um, experience at Reggio Emilia. And Reggio Emilia, Italy also was the city that we struggled the most in. It's not a touristy town. They would ask us oftentimes why we were there. Um, but there's a lot of universities that bring in um, students. I actually was with a group of 10 students from all of the U.S. that um, they were there for a course um, in the month of July. So that was a great opportunity to learn and, um, some things from them in the States. 
and um, learn at the center. So this, this is all about one of the hundred languages and it's about the power of light and how students um, and children can discover so much through light and there's, of course, a hundred. So I just focused on one. It, um, it's something that I brought back and it, the kids were blown away by it. And I'll tell you what Matt Sprout hooked me up with in just a minute. So the things that I've done as I uh, have ventured back to the United States with our Cub Academy program, um, I provided a, a PD um, for our staff after school and had a pizza party. Um, and so all the assistants and the teachers, I did some trial and error stuff with them. I gave them all a paper clip or a um, clothespin and they had to make a giraffe with the tools that I gave them and made them really realize what we are limiting our kids with when you're only giving them cer certain things and providing them the experiences. So I've done some things with teachers and I've done a lot of stuff with students just trial and error some of the things I was able to observe and learn um, in Reggio Emilia, Italy. This is that first day it snowed, I think back in October. And I took this picture because when we were observing and learning in the um, center, it was about letting, letting the kids explore from and talk to each other. So I listened to these two kids talk about this snow and it's like they'd never seen snow in their life, which they're four, so they have, but it was the <laughs> first one um, in Indiana. So I just listened to them and just took the opportunity to talk, just listen to what language they were using and vocabulary. And then I asked them some questions. Um, our awesome Cub Academy staff provide all kinds of opportunities for our kids. In Reggio, they were cleaning their own dishes. Um, I observed that in Japan, that they take um, ownership in their culture and in their um, environment and are always doing the things that sometimes we do for them. Um, so they're washing their toys so we do not spread germs. Um, this is just a PD that I did with the staff, some kids learning and playing, and I provided some listening and questioning to them. And then cooking. They um, want the kids to get dirty and measure and explore and ask. And um, so I actually was subbing in a classroom that day, and I um, made pudding with them. And I discussed a little bit before about the power, the hundred languages. This is just an example of the ray of light called Matt Sprout up in the end of July when I got home and I said, how many overheads do we have in a closet somewhere? We've got to have some overheads. And so it's um, a cheap version of a light table if you still have them around and giving the students, um, you put it, I put it out there and I said, what do you think this does? And one of the little boys, actually this one right here with the wonder on his face said, it's going to see our bones. It's going to see our bones. <laughs> and so it was them coming up with the vocabulary, what they um, were going to experience. So I didn't even turn the light on. And another, a couple other kids, you know, provided some different questions, but it wasn't me telling them it's an overhead projector and it's going to do this. It's giving them the power to explore um, together and learn from each other. So we um, did some opaque and transparent <laughs> objects and um, they, they just had a blast. And then now the teachers have been doing it in their classroom, but I wanted to trial and air some of this just with them too. So, uh, and then the last slide was, um, just some snapshots of our adventures. I was able to go to, um, mass at St. Mark mass at St. Mark Basilica. And I made a big air. I thought we were going to the English version. We sat through an hour of, um, an Italian mass, which was a great experience, but, um, we also um, went to Mass at Domo. We were there by chance two Sundays in the cathedrals and the architecture. Um, many of you have been to Europe and Italy. You already know that. But that alone, the experiences um, in the old culture and buildings and architecture. My parents um, ended up catching up with us in Italy and enjoying the adventure. And I think um, the power of this professionally was just as much balanced out personally um, making mem memories and laughing and just exploring together. Um, I think that my favorite quote is right there. We're in Florence, Italy. It's our last day. And it says, travel is good for the soul. Experiences are necessary for growth. And what you learn um, when you're out of the country and you have to fend for yourself on certain things. I had to take a taxi by myself to Reggio Emilia. I thought I might cry because we were not on the same page and I couldn't figure out what we, my hand language was not, um, sign language was not working out either. So it's just those powerful opportunities when you're not in your home environment and what you have to learn professionally and personally to, um, to 
to grow. So um, it was a great experience and a lot of it has came back to Franklin Schools and our Cub Academy program. And I'm very thankful that I'll have these memories for a lifetime. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the cannoli. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. All right, next topic is the mental health uh, moment. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to pass this over to Mrs. Worland. Just a quick update on the trauma-informed online academy that we purchased with Title IV funds last uh, May, June. We did purchase a year subscription, so we did our first round this fall semester with our entire team. And I want to thank Matt, I want to thank Jeff, all the principals in the back. Everyone in the district went through the first session to really generate common understanding, common language. And there was some data and feedback we received from that, which I've now shared with Kim as she starts her work on the mental health initiative. So again, as um, Dr. Clendenning already once thanked the community, I also want to thank the community for supporting the mental health initiative. Uh, we are learning a lot through some of our conversations with our team and through the feedback from this experience that I think will inform some of the work we do moving forward. We do have the subscription through the end of the month of May. I do have some community seats. So if there are community members or parents who would like access to that online academy, we did purchase some for the community. So again, thank you so much uh, to all of you in the room who helped lead that initiative and participated. And thank you to our community. Okay, nice job, thank you. The French Foreign Exchange. That sounds very official. <laughs> sounds very official. It does. Thank you. It could be the French Foreign Legion, too. Thank you, Dr. Carlos Rand. Thank you. I'm not sure if I'm here to inform or to ask permission. <laughs> uh, it's not on. Okay. Okay. Um, I just thought if I'm going to do something this big, I should maybe tell you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> or, or ask you. <laughs> <laughs> and you already know I've taken Franklin kids out of the country ten times, but um, the, this summer we're going to Paris. But this is something additional. Okay. Um, as I was at our IFLTA, which is the Foreign Language Teachers Convention. Um, in October, November, I was talking to the former uh, president of Ipleta, and he started talking to me about what he's going to do. And so I said, I'm in. I just jumped on the bandwagon. Uh, what we're going to do, hopefully, is have a visit from some French students from the Alps. And we've scheduled it. We've already had the visit from their uh, principal. Oh, I have to scroll it? OK. We've already had a visit from the principal, and or now who is now a language teacher, and so we are going to have three schools uh, cooperating together. At this point, there's no plan for me to go to the Alps. However, that would be a different question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, West Lafayette is going to the Alps this summer. Mm -hmm. I'm going to Paris. So though our school is one of the three pillars, and he loved Franklin. He loved Indianapolis. It's, it's wonderful when somebody is so enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he made a very powerful PowerPoint, which he will show to his parents this Thursday. At our school, we've pretty much doubled the French program. So we are on a roll. The French students do lots of things. Uh, they go places, they sing, they, they cook, they eat, they, they talk French. So you can see we have a lot of students to support this kind of activity. And we're talking about 15 or 20 students coming for a week. It's not huge. Uh, when he was here, he met uh, Mr. Wallart, also talked to several classes, and he kind of taught them. He is he's a very excellent language teacher, I can tell after five minutes. He's very engaging. He can speak right to their level. He knows what he's doing, and he is actually an English teacher. So our students are pretty enthusiastic. Okay, These two, these two groups didn't even talk to him, but they're enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> The other partner school is West Lafayette. The, the students are, you know, like kids of Purdue parents and so forth. And it's a small school. 
little smaller than ours. They have a very strong French program. You can see all the pictures. Uh, Steve Olhout has gone many times with his students to a program in the German area of France. And it was, he was disappointed to know that they could not reciprocate. They could not, they are a public school and they wouldn't let their kids come back to see us. So kind of serendipitously, he has a student in his class whose mother was Mr. Wallart's student a long time ago. She's Chinese married to a Polish and oh my gosh, Mr. Wallart found us. And he said, uh, he wrote to Steve and he said, could I come and meet you? I'd like to st set up a program. So we're going to set up this program. And uh, this is the, this is near, <laughs> near where you were. Okay. Albertville. It's in the Alps. It's just, just almost in sight of Mont Blanc, the biggest mountain there. And this is the town, kind of like ours. It has a little more, more older town connected to it. It's about the same size as ours, really. Yeah. Uh, this is the school. It actually is a Catholic school. It's been there for a long time. Named Joan of Arc. Uh, the students, when I looked at their website, I mean, the students are doing, you know, like international baccalaureate, and they're doing the Cambridge English testing there. It's a, ta it's a very good school, I think. So I think the caliber of students will be inspiring to us. And not that, I mean, I think we're inspiring to them, too. He was quite inspired. Uh, this is Mr. Wallard, um, and he's teaching my students. He taught them all in French that day, and they were, they were delighted. They understood everything. Um, so uh, if we do this, which I'm ready. I've already told my students we're doing this, but uh, they would arrive <laughs> probably on Thursday, the 16th of April, and that's from Chicago. Chicago. He insists on flying to Chicago. Uh, they think that they can take a train from Chicago to Franklin, <laughs> but no. So, <laughs> oh, dear. and then they would go to the, to school. This is called a séjour linguistique. In Europe, the students are very enthusiastic about really learning another language, so they want to go and stay and learn the language, and the culture comes along with that. So they want to stay with the family and. He is um, suggesting that they stay one person to each family. So I would have 15 or 20 families. I have 25 who signed up and said maybe, but we'll see. Wow. And then we'd have a pitch in. We're going to do some very Indiana things. We're going to have Jane Huey make us a little skit that we have costumes and we do folk. You know, we have the, the great moments of Indiana French history. I thought it would be very, really fun. Patterning it, patterning it after what we did in Quebec with uh, a, a raucous evening of interactive history there. Uh, they need a little time with their host family so they can bond and perhaps create friendships. This is how I started. I had a student for a week. Her dad invited me to Mexico. I went for the summer. The rest is history. And that's before the internet. Um, Monday, we thought we could take a field trip. Maybe, maybe not with a school bus. I don't know, because we might stay too long. But we've already been to these places to, to see how much it would cost. It. They'll give us a, a cheap rate for the students. Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, I'm thinking up fun things after school, like uh, the basketball coach said he would have his team teach us pl to play basketball. <laughs> and uh, then we could go to the fax room and cook and eat and sing songs. And then maybe since Friday is the prom day, maybe we could take a, a bus and go to Purdue, okay? A school bus. And then you can bring us back and they'll go on to Chicago. I'm not telling my students that the West Lafayette students are going to Chicago because I have something else to do that day. But that would be the, the gist of that. So thank you for listening. Do you have any questions? No questions. Just one thing that you can pass on. We have a Delta flight that goes from Paris to Indianapolis direct. <laughs> so you could get them here to Indianapolis and save that logistics on getting them down. I need to mention that to yeah. him. He yeah. thinks he's going to fly out of Geneva. But. Yep. Yeah, I've been there. I've been on that one. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. Yes, I think it, okay. it sounds good to me. I will tell him. <laughs> any, any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. So um, I, I did not put this on as an action item because I believe that really there's not much other than being asked to host family and they're going to come and be a part of that. Um, and if there's any cost, it would be minimal like lunch or whatever. And then I assume Mr. A House is working on that or their chaperone is going to pay for their lunches during that time. Is that correct? When we're at school? I think they pay for their own lunch. Okay. I've talked to him about sp spending money. Okay. They, they so, have to pay for their own museum fees and lunches and things. I don't want to make a cost to the family. The families feed and board them. 
so and then maybe they'll go to the Mexican restaurant with him and bring a, a pitch in dinner. And I don't expect costs to the families. I'm, I didn't put that in the brochure because I'm not finished with the brochure, but I, I don't think that um, the family should expect cost. They shouldn't expect the kids. If they go on the field trip, it would be about a 20, 20, $25 field trip. All right. Are you yeah. hoping that the host families are your rich students? Oh, they are. Really? are they oh yes. <laughs> yes. And if they're not, I'll talk to them again. <laughs> we will have, we will have families. The host? Oh, you can have a student. I have two bedrooms. One's decorated in French decor. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't spoken French in about 20 years now. So. Well, I remember when a, an English teacher here had a, an exchange, a con, a, every year's exchange with England. I kept Gemma. I kept Rose. Come to find out, I am from those towns. It's like, it's, like it's an adventure really? to meet yeah. somebody from another country. All of a sudden, you're interested in that country. Thank you for doing this. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. This was just important. You already told everybody to go. <laughs> and I don't see Mr. A house here. So. Rita, are you okay with it? I think it sounds great. Mr. A house is in shock. He's back in the. Yeah. No, it. it that's there, there's no action needed just because of the reciprocal side. Obviously, the liability and those things will be on, on their trip. It's true. Yeah. So, Mr. Ahouse met Mr. Walker. Yep. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving on to action items. Our first uh, item is the Ponderance Network Audit. Mr. Sprout. Thank you. A couple of A couple of years ago, uh, we were looking at doing a network audit. One of the things when it comes to technology is making sure you're comfortable with come on, test. Do it this way. I should I should learn how to use technology. <laughs> <laughs> a while back, we looked at having our network audited. You know, when you are when you are at home and your password's protected, you need to be able to lay your head on the pillow and go to sleep and feel good, right? And so at night, you lay down. You don't think about the front door, you lock it. How many people have seen a fireman kick in the front door, right? It, they can get in. The network's the same way. We, we are very proactive. We train new teachers on phishing and all that type of technology. But what we wanted to do at, the, at this point was to have somebody, a professional company, come in and do a network audit, then find the holes in our network. It was an exorbitant price. And so I, I couldn't justify it in my mind. And I thought, okay, well, life's okay. Working with our insurance trust, uh, they are wanting to do a HIPAA audit. And they ask who I would suggest do it. And I suggested Pondurance. And Pondurance, in turn, greatly decreased the price of having a network audit, which brings me to standing here today. Um, uh, in looking at network audits, it, you don't really realize the, amount, the quantity of network attacks that take place. Um, it, you would expect that this is a, they say it's live. I, I have my doubts, but these are attacks that go across the world. Um, uh, last week on Thursday, we ran a test on our firewall to see how many times our network was attacked. 58. That was a number of pages of details of people that had tried to get on our network. And so what we want to do is make sure that our network is not you can't make it bulletproof, but you can certainly have the professionals come in and do a network audit and say, these are the holes you need to fill. And so that would be my request tonight is to have Pondurance come in and do a network audit on our uh, network technology firewall and have them uh, respond back to us and us be able to fill in those holes to protect our students, our staff, and our data. Uh, the, the cost for that is $15,000. Um, thanks to, once again, to Mr. Lamb, uh, he suggested providing some training. Not only is, are these the holes, but this is what you need to look for. So I appreciate that tip. We did negotiate that in and they did not raise the price for that. So I was excited to see that. So uh, I would request tonight that we sign the contract with Pondurance to have them do a network intrusion test. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Have a motion? I'll move to approve. Okay, any questions or comments? Just one comment. Yes, sir. 
consider treating the results of the study as our incident response plans. So limited audience, because that's going to show you how to get into the, to yes. the back door, right? Yes. So or into the front door. Right. So, so we got to we got to make sure we protect that. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor for the Honduras contract, uh, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Say no. Thank you, Mr. Sprout. It passes. Next uh, item is the full fuel budgeting program with the Indiana Bond Bank. This is gross. Can you hear me now? Yeah. There you go. Okay. So last month, um, Mr. Mangus made a presentation from the Indiana Bond Bank um, for us to consider the fuel budgeting program. Um, and just to uh, refresh your memory, a fuel budgeting program involves setting a floor and a ceiling for gas prices. And um, anything above that ceiling, we would get a refund. Anything below the floor, we would owe that to the bond bank. And it pretty much is an insurance policy um, for any spikes in the market for fuel prices. So um, I spoke with one of my colleagues at Warren Township about this program because I knew they were members. And um, he said, don't look at it as a fuel savings program, but instead look at it as insurance that if there is a, a crisis in the Middle East and gas prices spike, that we wouldn't have to reduce our transportation services. So um, once I started thinking like that, it, it makes a lot more sense. Mm -hmm. um, it'll cost us four and a half cents per gallon for this insurance, which equates to about $3,500 a year for us. Um, Mr. Lamb asked the last time, um, if we had been in this program the last five or six years, what would that look like? And actually it resulted in about a, a $62,000 savings for our school corporation. So um, we don't have those floor and ceiling numbers yet. Those are um, fluctuate with the market and they're, they don't plan to lock those in until December 20th at least. Um, so at that point, they will send me a confirmation letter, and with your approval, I will sign off on that and go through the process of becoming a member as of January 1st. Um, so any questions about that? Um, you've got a lot of legal documents in your packet. There's a lot of paperwork and bureaucracy that comes along with any state program. Um, this is a program of the state treasurer. So NDOT, a lot of city and towns, and a lot of schools are a part of this program. So I don't see this as being a huge risk for us, but instead um, will help me sleep better. Um, as you know, we've always struggled with our transportation budget anyway. Um, so this would just take any of that um, spike in fuel prices risk away. Any questions I can answer? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Do we have a motion? I will move to approve. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor of moving to the fuel bo uh, budgeting program, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes. Thank you, Ms. Gross. Move Thank on. you. Moving on to the next item. Okay, the next item is a resolution to transfer funds from education to the operations fund. Um, you're very much used to this now. This happens every quarter. <clears throat> the only thing different this time is it's a little less with it being towards the end of the year. We normally transfer about 1.8 million. This time we only need to transfer about 1.4. So this will be our final transfer for the year and we'll cover September, October, and November activity. I'll move to approve. Thank you. Uh, just one question. Do we need to add, or does the um, weather event at CBIS, would that cause us to move anything or to add anything to this? No, we're going to try to delay that invoicing until January. Okay. 
Thank you. That way we don't have to request additional appropriation. Okay. All those in favor of the transfer, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Pass. Okay. The next couple of resolutions are um, fairly routine also, but they're a part of year in close. Um, so the first one to transfer appropriations, um, this authorizes me to, um, to transfer appropriation amounts within the education operations and debt service funds. So if we um, have a deficit in any one of those funds, we can transfer between line items. Um, and that's just part of the year in close process. If we, if we have any of those, um, any of those transfers, I will report out at the January meeting. Okay, any questions? Can move for approval. Okay, thank you. All those in favor of the transfer, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, it passes. Last item. Last resolution, hang in there with me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, also part of year, year in close is to um, make sure that we don't um, have any accounts in the red. So it, it could be that for our re reimbursable grants, we have submitted um, requests for reimbursement, but we don't get it before year end. So if that happens, um, we would need to borrow from the rainy day funds um, to bring those into the black. And then once that reimbursement came in, we would um, reimburse the rainy day fund. So that's just a way of covering um, any deficits that we have really as a loan program. And it, it could be that we won't have any. We just won't know until then. Okay, any questions? Okay. Move for approval. Thank you. All those in favor of the transfer of this resolution, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Nice job, Ms. Rose. Thank you. All right, moving on to the uh, discussion items. Dr. Clinton-Denning, you got a whole list of uh, policies there for we us. We do have them. Uh, these policies are coming to you and um, as a discussion item. I talked to Mr. Wagner today that as we travel through this is his first round of this. A lot of, all these are dealing with state laws that have changed and, and minor uh, adjustments to that, um, except the... Uh, Volunteer policy, which is 8120, that reflects our um, practice with regard to moving into the, the new structure and where the people use their ID, and that would ask them to, to pay for that background check. But other than that, it's in compliance with that. This is, as like I said, discussion items for you uh, for this month, and then come back in January, we will uh, move to approve these. So that's item number one through 13. Do we know how many volunteers we have each year that will fill out the background check? I mean, what it would cost to cover that. Do we know the number of volunteers, Mr. Sewell? <coughs> I anticipated that question. Good <laughs> man. <laughs> Last year, we had uh, 372 volunteers, um, not including approximately another 120 uh, FEC, uh, um, right on ed education connection volunteers. This year so far, we've had 535 um, volunteer background checks done, 107 of those with FEC. And how much, how much are we paying for the background checks? I mean, how much We're are the volunteers going to have to pay? Yeah. Uh, the background check would be twelve ninety five, and would be good for two years. Okay. Thank you. That's very helpful. You know, one thing, as you consider that, if that's a concern, one thing we could do is look to some type of scholarship program yeah. or anybody that would have significant stress. Obviously we want moms and dads to be a part or guardians to be part of the kid's life and to help us chaperone things. Yeah. This is not intended to keep them away. It's intended to help. <clears throat> so um, there are some things I think we could look at if that's something the board would like us to pursue over the next month. 
we could come up with some additions to that. I think so. I think it would I think be so. good. So we're hearing that we'll come with some, some strategies and then we'll include those in Friday notes uh, for you to think about. And then when we come back here in January, we will act upon those. Perfect. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're up next. <laughs> Are you ready for that next item? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, I've uh, presented to you for discussion a, a, a document, an agreement with the Johnson County uh, Commissioners and Johnson County Sheriff's Office, uh, kind of defining our relationship with them as we have uh, employed two uh, special deputies as school resource officers. So we are we are fully funding all of their salary and benefits. Um, the Johnson County Sheriff is providing uh, their arrest powers and helping us uh, to a great extent with the, uh, meeting their equipment needs and just uh, in, uh, training needs and oversight as a law enforcement entity since we don't have our own uh, police uh, department as a school corporation. Uh, so um, Sheriff Burgess reached out to me about that and, and suggested that we uh, establish an agreement to, to, to structure our partnership with them about that. Um, we he offered the agreement they used at Central Nine as a as a starting point. I uh, took that agreement, uh, tailored it uh, to our needs. Uh, Mr. Young reviewed that for us, and uh, it, it, and uh, we offer it for your consideration. Uh, the city has uh, our uh, Sheriff Burgess has submitted it to his legal counsel for their review, and it's my understanding that the county commissioners are also ready to uh, give it consideration. Mr. Sewell, if you would check that document just on the signature line and correct the spelling of my last name, please. Oh, yes, sir. That is brutal. I apologize. <laughs> and he's the president tonight, too. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you really screwed that up, bro. So raise your hand if you want to be director of operations. <laughs> Hot seat for the next one, too. So whenever you're ready, I'll take some more lumps. <laughs> Do you have any questions about the agreement? Okay. The next item I'm, I'm presenting to you for your consideration discussion tonight is an FCC 601 application. Uh, we have uh, been advised, as, I, as I've consulted with our two-way radio advisor uh, a, a provider, that uh, if, if we want to make sure we're in good shape during uh, an emergency event, that we establish a dedicated channel for that purpose that operates in an analog mode. Um, we are we have maxed out uh, our frequency allowance under our current uh, licenses, and so this application will allow them to apply for more uh, another frequency or two on our behalf. I submit it to, for your consideration. Will this drive new equipment? as well more radios or no, our existing equipment will be fine. fine we'll just have new new cha channels to operate on okay those can be programmed into our existing radios well we give one to the national guard or the uh the reunification spot we will have radios on hand uh as we work to coordinate with them on how to use their facility as a reunification they have their own radio network we would have to kind of uh uh establish a liaison process where um, we can we can communicate both ways, either by providing them with radios that we have on hand for that, that purpose, or by making sure we have um, like an instant command structure where there's good communication there. Very nice. Any other questions? Comments? Thank you. Thanks. Okay, last item there, Mrs. Gross. Okay, one more. Let's see. So, for your consideration over the next month or so, um, Cub Care and Cub Academy were established about five years ago. And um, these programs, the Cub Care is before and after school care for our students. And then Cub Academy is preschool for about 110 students. So um, these 
programs have been very successful thanks to these two ladies right here. Um, Katie Smith is in charge of our preschool and Amanda Martin is in charge of our cub care before and after school program. We have not changed our rates in at least that five years and before our before and after school care, which um, resided with ACE, um, had those rates even before that. So it's been a long time since we've raised rates. We've been very sensitive to um, to that cost for parents. So, so this graph shows the current state for um, the Cub Care AM and PM. We charge $4 um, for AM care and $8 for PM care for a total of $12 a day. Um, and then the free and reduced and our staff pay about $8 a day right now. We're proposing that to increase those rates by $1 in the morning and $2 in the afternoon for a total of $15 per day. Um, free and reduce, we're proposing to keep those rates the same. We thought you would want to see a comparison to other schools in our area. Probably that this was kind of a hard thing to, um, to compare because some schools have more hours or less hours. Um, some schools allow drop-ins like we do, others do not. So when we drilled, Mr. Kirby helped Amanda drill down into the data. And so the, the best comparison that we could come up with was what we charge on an hourly rate. So right now on an hourly rate for um, our AM care, we charge $2.67. Um, our next competitor is at $7.21. So even with our proposed rate change, we're still only around $3.33. So we're very competitive and very parent friendly. The PM looks very similar. Right now we're at $2 and the proposed rates are bringing that to $2.50 an hour. <clears throat> Keb Academy, we have um, about 75 students enrolled full-time. Um, the others are enrolled for the half-day program. Right now, we charge $155 per week um, for a full day and then $75 per week for half-day. And right now, we offer a 5% discount um, to faculty and staff. We're proposing to raise that by $10 a week for the full full-day program to 165 and keeping the half-day program at the 75 mark. But we would like to um, increase our discount for faculty and staff to 10%. Um, we received a lot of feedback on the, our listening tour that um, if we offered a deeper discount, more teachers and staff would take advantage of that. Um, so we want to encourage that enrollment. Is there a reduced lunch rate on this one? Yeah, no. Okay. Is that typical on the other? So again, our, our comparison to our competitors, even the proposed increase puts us about in the middle. Um, with Discovery Center three-year-olds uh, being more Honey, Honey Grove and Center Grove, <clears throat> excuse me, being more in Goddard, um, winning the prize at two fifty a week. So. So that's the data that I have to present. Ladies, do you have anything to add? Um, and I'm not sure if I said this at the beginning, but these are the programs that fund our employer of choice initiatives as well. So the revenue generated in these programs allow us to create programs for our employees. Do you anticipate pushback from anybody when these go into effect? Nobody's gonna care. And only for the full day, it increases on 490 days. So, in the grand scheme of 180 sure. days, it's, it's pretty spread out. And um, definitely because we have three, four, and five year olds in the classroom, three year olds anywhere are really high. And so, they're meeting in the middle between those four and five year olds. Good. And we do provide like AM and PM snacks, that takes that off the parents. Um, and it's, our hours are a little longer than everyone else, too, on some of the before and after school. So we've got a lot of perks, and I've got a waiting list now. So great, that's good. You guys done a great job with this. Yeah. And I believe in Amanda's program, if I recall, 
these were actually the prices for ACE. So we have not uh, moved forward at all. And so at this point in time, and actually Amanda came a year ago and said, would we consider this? And I have to be the one to tell you that I'm the one that said, no, we won't. Um, <laughs> and it was with everything else that was going on, it just wasn't the right, right time. Right. And so um, this is something she's been bringing forward to us. Um, they do a phenomenal job. And I do think that small increase will, we would be able to, and we'll continue to work with people if they, you know, these ladies work with a lot of different people There's to help them meet their needs. That's great. And they don't have to pay when they're not in school and a lot of sinners would. So that's a good point. And that's the same with country. A lot of students when they do take a home off. Mm -hmm. We're just a doctor in the service. So you only have one day you don't take one day. So mm. And the attendance in cap care is around 250, 260 every day. Yeah, we're about 40 up um, this time last year per day. So we're going to continue to increase. We're going to have capacity increase. I think we're out of shares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we'll be bringing this <coughs> forward as an action item in the at the January meeting. So if there's any information that we can provide between now and then, to help you make an informed decision, please let us know. Okay, thank you, Ms. Chris. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving to the next uh, item on the agenda, the Board Administrative Comments. Dr. Clendenning. Yes, Lost at School is the book we've been reading and I'm talking to Mrs. Worrell and uh, as we kind of talked about some ways we could help engage over in the conversation. We'd like to, to you to look at page 70 and 71 in your book and that's the also uh and we heard last time how difficult we think the also is and you can see uh in the story of joey uh, they didn't check everything so i thought we would just spend a few seconds here talking about if you guys could give us some more reflection about on your also and then uh board if you have any comments reflections back on that as well it's the last two pages of the chapter in the uh, chapter three Yep. yep. Like the one that they yep, there that it is. So it's 76. Okay. 76 for the heart. I'll start just by saying the also has identifies a lot of Latin skills. The bottom line, you have to narrow it down to about three to concentrate on. And um, then to identify the problem, we're, we're actually moved on to what's called a plan B conversation now, um, where we're um, this week recording those conversations with students. And uh, then our facilitator will critique our conversations and we'll go from there. But um, that's interesting. And it's really, it's acting on empathy, identifying a problem, then collaborating with the student to come up with a solution and tracking it over time to see if there is a change in behavior. So you've started talking to students, you said? We've just started talking to students. How are they, how are they responding? Um, we were allowed to talk to spouses, our own children, or students at school for this first round. Okay. Okay. I actually took a real student, um, and it took me six days to actually have the conversation due to um, suspensions and behavior issues. <laughs> so um, I didn't have an opportunity as quickly as I wanted to to actually have that collaborative talk with a student, which tells you we really need to intervene. Right. Uh, we learned quite a bit when, and we're still at the ALSEP uh, phase of this, where we've done our second ALSEP to kind of practice uh, breaking those skills apart. And the, the two common themes uh, that we had uh, issues with were we were lumping things together. We would say the student is having difficulty reading. Well, what is it? What what part of the 90 minutes of reading is the student having problems with. Um, and then we also, uh, we use the term understand, like the student is having difficulty understanding uh, how to stand in a line. And sh the feedback she gave us was really understanding is not a good term for us to be using. We're, we're uh, identifying that kid's problem right there, but it's understanding and you can't really explain what understanding is. We're just assuming that that's the students having difficulty uh, understanding that. 
Uh, so we are then going back to reword those uh, lagging skills. So then when we have the conversation, the word understanding is not so obscure to the student. If we said, you're having trouble understanding how to stand in a line, they're going to be like, what? <laughs> uh, so we get, we have to break that down. And so our phone call tomorrow is going to focus on that. And if we were able to really uh, break those break that down into uh, small enough steps that we'll be able to have those conversations with our students. Mrs. Brand, you said that uh, the challenge is getting it down to those three or, or three focus ones, right? Sometimes, um, well, one student in particular that I'm working with, um, we had about 10 identified lagging skills. And so you really have to look at safety first. Okay. Um, safety for the learning environment and right. you want to you want to focus on that first mm -hmm. making sure they're not um, hurting themselves or anyone else so that's kind of what we're ratcheting it down to right now to make sure that we're addressing that and then we can move on to the other lagging skills once we get those mastered gotcha. okay. all right thank you anything else we the, the book's been very engaging you know as we as we think about it from the cabinet level um, we continue to say it can't be for everybody. I'll just tell you that there's no way you look at both their buildings or Dylan, you know, as we the smaller building, there's no way every kid can go through this. We're, we're trying to target. So how are you targeting some of those behaviors? Who are you going to talk to? All right. We'll talk. Wow. This guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, they, the advice we got was not to target uh, the most intense behavior, because you might be able to go through that entire list and find things. So don't target the most challenging student uh, in the entire school. Start with students who you can identify a few lagging skills on and then uh, identify those two or three uh, items. To, so we're, you're not jumping into the deep end uh, with our first students in our first trials. So we are we are wading into the pool um, as opposed to jumping in uh, over our head. However, long term, with a building of over 800 students, um, we really are going to look at the 20 that consume most of our resources um, through our BBST building based support team or kids team, the referral process for academics versus the referral process for behavior, we will do the ALSEP process through those kids that are referred for, for behavioral issues. All right, thank you. All right, moving to the uh, Alumni Hall of Fame. Yes, just a couple of things with regard to timeline. The committee has a meeting scheduled uh, on December the 18th, and that's Mrs. Ott, Dr. Hyden, Mrs. Bailey, uh, Ms. Campbell, Mrs. Betts, and Mr. Greyhouse. And I do believe if someone else wanted to join from the board's perspective, you're more than welcome because if you remember, uh, Mr. Vaught also mm -hmm. was on that committee. So we would be welcome to, to have somebody else on that. Uh, so we're going to meet just to kind of review the guiding principles and the structure and how we uh, get the nominees uh, and what we need to do to, to secure them. <clears throat> the window opens up uh, right after the new year on January 2nd. It's going to close on March the 6th, and then the, the committee will meet on the 10th as we review. And then as we found out, it's usually going to take probably a couple different meetings as we travel through the different uh, nominees. And then the induction ceremony would be August the 27th with the tailgate on the 28th. So it's always the first home football game is how we've ended up uh, doing that in the past years. So if you have someone that you – uh, know that done significant contributions and the five one of the five guiding principles. Please nominate them. Do we have a? Do they have to be out of school so many years before we can nominate them? We did I look at that, we, I and I we, now yes. Didn't we have a a time frame like you couldn't do somebody who graduated last year? We had was it ten years or was it? I'm not sure what we established on that. I don't. Yeah, but there was a. Yeah, I would agree. We did. We actually looked for that maybe under thirty-five, and then we're going to have a scenario for them, like, hey, under thirty-five and doing great things, but their endeavors may not be uh, to the level of being in the Hall of Fame yet. And we did talk about that. 
Um, in addition, military, we, we talked about kind of going back to the future. At the old high school, we had a place where we had military recognition, and we were looking at that uh, as well uh, and putting putting a plaque or something to separate that. And remember, it's not about athletics. You know, it's really about, you know, individual student growth, collaboration, trust, systemic improvement, and communication. That's what we're looking at. We want people to make a difference in their community, uh, make a difference in their lives, and a lot, whatever they've done that's a significant contribution. Significant has not been defined by us. We, we want you to, to, to the community say, this has been significant. Um, and so we're looking forward to having those nominees. Um, we also reserve, when we, when we announce, you know, when we go through and we pick somebody, this past year we actually did have a, a nominee and they declined it actually saying that, that they didn't feel like that was what they did, that, that what they wanted was to be recognized. Their work was intended to be uh, for their community and, and what they're doing, and they didn't want to go out uh, and be on the wall, and, and we honored that. So we did have a nominee. Uh, we also reserved the right not to nominate anyone uh, and move forward. Yeah, we want to make sure that there is a high bar to this as we travel forward. Are previous nominees included in the current mix for review? Yes. Okay. We keep them for three years. Right. Yeah. So we do bring them back to review. And if we have someone who had some data that was missing or lagging, we do uh, request that the person <laughs> nominating them reach back out and provide that uh, and more information in years two or three. All right. So thank you. Okay. Moving on then to the uh, calendar. Yep. Mark your calendars for Thursday night uh, for the band concert. The choir concert was on Thursday and Friday. I just have to say, Addie Mudd's rendition of A Holy Goodness. Night yeah. gave me chills. Um, it's the first time, I think, that I've ever seen a kid in the, after the end of her song get a standing ovation. I just talked to, talked to Darren Thompson on yep. Sunday, and he said, that was by far the best solo he'd ever heard in a in a choir concert. He says, yep. and I've heard lots of choir yeah, yeah. concerts. <laughs> so, so the band will be equally as good. We're looking forward to that. Yeah. We do have Christmas break beginning on Friday, the, uh, December twentieth, going through the first day back on the sixth. Uh, we do have Teacher Records Day on the third. So teachers actually come back on that Friday. Kids not till the Monday. Uh, that week when we do arrive, we have Coogee Kids. Uh, Greg Moore is once again spearheading the, the connections for all of us. We do have host families for them. Uh, so we'll look forward to having them on the 8th uh, through the 12th. They'll be at the middle school on one entire dedicated day. They'll be at the high school uh, the next day. Uh, and then I think CBIS is getting them for a small portion of the day, if I remember right on the schedule. Cub Academy, now the reason we brought the rates today, uh, when we do vote, uh, then Katie will be able to place this information on registration packets uh, to get out for everybody. And that is 4.30 to 6 at Northwood Elementary on January the 23rd. We moved it to wait for board approval for marketing purposes. So it'll be February 13th now because we wanted to have the board approval for the sure. marketing out, depending on what we decide. Sorry, that was on there. <laughs> and one more thing I'd like for the board to consider, and I and I, I talked about this, uh, but I did not get it on the calendar or on the agenda. We have February uh, President's Day coming up, and it's a day off. It's a scheduled day off. Obviously, Red for Ed caused us to have a few opportunities uh, where we didn't have enough subs, so we actually canceled that day, and we had a, a day off. I would like to for the board to consider allowing us to use an e-learning day on that president's day so we would still be in school we'd still be moving forward it would just be an e-learning day to allow the families that have made plans to be gone uh, different things like that they would still be accommodated and so if if uh what i think then is i will look for your feedback if you're okay with that then i'll make that announcement uh in january as well so if you would let me know what your thoughts are on that, that would be that would be great. Or if you have an opinion today, that'd be fine. But I, I do think it'd be uh, good on our behalf to move forward with the e-learning day on that Monday. All right. Moving on to public comments. If anyone has, uh, please limit your time to two minutes. <coughs> Mm 
Um, I'm glad to hear about the uh, volunteer situation, um, but, uh, and I will give it kudos because I'm a longtime volunteer with the 500 Festival every year, whenever we do a registration, especially for the fourth grade program that I'm involved in very heavily, they require a background check and, but they come up and say $15 if you can donate it. I have not because it's a yearly thing and it's not for two years. Um, but the 1295 will make it a little bit more enticing for me to do it. But I will tell you that's another payment that parents will use for not wanting to do it. We already have quite a few parents at Creekside and other places that don't want to volunteer for anything, especially on a field trip, because usually there's a fee to go. And there is a little bit of issues there. Um, so if there's something like when the person parents decides to sign up and oh, there's a twelve dollar fee, somehow maybe having them be able to pay for it here and there over the span. Or okay, we'll look into maybe since you've done this or whatever. That's something we need to look at. Definitely. Thanks for your input. Okay, with that, we'll adjourn the meeting. Thanks for your time tonight. <laughs>